welcome to Shell's Probe of Wisdom. I am here with another beautiful Pin Up Journey story. I'm here with the lovely Jenna, aka Jenna Sue. <laughs> Jenna Sue, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and she's cute as a button. And Thank she is you. In her very own classic automobile. Let's let's tell everybody what you're sitting in because this is a gorgeous vehicle. We are sitting today in a 56 Plymouth Belvedere. Here's the back seat, you guys. It's like a oh couch. Oh my God. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank that is you. a this true, that is a true make out back seat. Like true make out back seat. Thing, if you're short like me, <laughs> uh, I sleep back there sometimes at some of the car shows. Cause I'm there like, you go. That's I'm plenty, and there's up plenty of room. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so we're just going to kind of get right into it. Uh, Jenna says that she is uh, 30 years of age and she looks amazing. I thought she was so much younger when she said 30. I was kind of like, get the front door out of here. Thank you. As <laughs> long as I'm old enough to drink, I don't care. That's exactly <laughs> what it is, right? And um, she has four four fur babies. What are their names? Um, I'll start with uh, the eldest, which is Ninja, my cat. And then I have Mister. He's a little skinny leg Chihuahua. Aww. And Blue is his daughter. Another Chihuahua I have. And then uh, I just got a Brussels Griffon, and I'm gonna show him. Uh, my mom's into showing dogs, and there's a lady right across the river from me that is one of the best in the nation um, with breeding them. And and so she sold me one, and I'll get to spend some more time with my mom and show dogs. Um, oh, that's cool. And then I have a horse too. I feel kind of bad. I didn't even say anything about her, but oh I have goodness. a horse. I love horses. Oh no! What? <laughs> What's his name or her name? Her name is Zena, like Zena Warrior Princess. So. I love it. <laughs> I love Zena. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I <laughs> get pictures of all the fur babies so that you guys can meet them and kind of like yeah. a little bit more about Jenna. Um, <laughs> so we're just kind of gonna just jump right in here Donna. let's start with age eight what was going on around that time frame of your life yes i started to grow boobs when i was in uh, the second grade and that was super awkward and um kind of unexpected i i want to know out there if anyone else has started growing boobs in second <laughs> grade let me know <laughs> <laughs> there's more out there i know you're out there <laughs> I can't even say I did. I did not start until fourth grade, like fourth, fifth grade. So I can't, I can't even tell you I did. I'm sorry. I was hoping I could like be relatable, but I'm like, no, I started a little bit later. <laughs> yeah. So that Aww. was awkward. <laughs> Explain that to people. <laughs> right. So how do the boys treat you? Like to be in second grade and you're already developing. Yeah, they'd make fun of me or, uh, you know, you know how boys are, they push you around and they're kind of, you know, that's because they like you. Well, I pushed back, you know, I was a tomboy. I love um, it. Probably a little too hard. I was kind of nasty. <laughs> that's what they get. That's yeah. what they get. I, I mean, remember this little boy, he liked me. And I guess he wasn't aware of the differences yet, but he kicked me in the crotch. <laughs> I'm like, well, that doesn't hurt me. <laughs> and then he ran away. <laughs> I would have chased him down and kicked him right back. <laughs> um, I'd have to go back to class with him anyway, so. <laughs> He'd come back. Funny. <laughs> um, what about the little girls? That had well, to be hard, too, just to... Yeah, because most of my girlfriends back then, you know, had big sisters, so they were kind of envious, and they were like, man, I wish I had boobs, and all I ever had to say was, I wish I could cut them off. My mom was like, you know, someday you're going to want those. Well, she was right. I wanted them. <laughs> <laughs> but it, second grade was a little early. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. That's a, that's a little hard. I would say mm. second grade but I would think you're going through like the whole entire like sex education. Like that didn't even happen to like fourth grade. 
So right? you kind of grade for you? I think we didn't get it until like fifth or sixth grade. Oh no, we had our first sex education class in fourth grade, and then we Good had it again in fifth. And then by the time we got to sixth grade, um, because it happened every year in health class. Yeah. So by the time we got to sixth grade, they stopped like separating us because before it was like the the we went to like the girls' room, we learned about the girls' stuff, and the boys learned about the boys' stuff, and then we would switch, and then we would learn about the boys' stuff, and then they would learn about the girls' stuff. And but yeah. we never were together, so we just kind of like awkwardly came back at lunchtime, like, Ooh. <laughs> like do you guys know what you have to do? Yeah, I was like, so it was, it was just like one of those awkward like. <laughs> Yeah, I think I blocked that out. I don't remember. <laughs> you probably had it. You probably it was probably traumatic because it, it was traumatic. <laughs> um, so uh, so we went we got, we went through the rest of elementary school. You were developing still. Now we go to the the dread awful middle school. So how I know middle school was rough for me. A lot of people hated high school. I did not like middle school. What yeah. how was that for you? Ooh. Well, acne, you know, comes along with that. And um a, a mechanism I had learned apparently was like to slouch so your boobs don't like stick out so much, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was very slouchy and started wearing like darker clothes because I already had felt different for so long <laughs> because of the breasts and um you know I was a tomboy and then it was just easy to to dress in black and mm -hmm. sweatshirts and no one could see what was going on and how you were changing you wear, like the oversized sweatshirts and stuff to kind of like uh, mask it yeah. <laughs> yep and so so then you know you got your own little circle of of little weirdo friends like you and that's always nice and and then then in high school you start to you know everyone else is is blossoming so <laughs> it's normal and and uh i at that point i kind of was all over the place i was telling you i was a, a farm kid too so like some little goth farm kid didn't make any sense to anyone except for my few friends they got it yeah <laughs> It was, I mean, so one day I would incredible, look incredible life. Like, <laughs> like to be on a farm. Now I know you have a horse and yeah. you know, like this girly girl, but then a town boy at the same time. It's kind of like you're just like a really like well rounded, like kind of all American gal from what I see like, so far. Sometimes I feel like a chameleon. Like, I feel like I can blend with with lots of different types of people now but this this set is my favorite set because you know in the pinup scene and, and vintage scene yeah tell us a little bit about like you were talking about um growing up with like your parents like they're kind of more old-fashioned and so you mm. already were antiquing and like yes that kind um, of stuff very young yeah so my uh, my dad had a side business, which was a tent rental business, like the big party tents, you know, and we would go set those up and, <clears throat> you know, spend a lot of time in the vehicle. So we'd buy CDs of vintage music, particularly classic country, um, and spend hours driving and listening and then set a tent up, you know, and, um, and with that, with me working, I, I would get my own pay. <laughs> And uh, dad liked to go to auctions, farm auctions usually, but uh, sometimes there'd be antiques at them. And I remember my first, you know, purchasing my first antiques. And my grandma would take me to uh, consignment shops and stuff a lot too. And I remember buying like uh, my first necklace. It was like an Egyptian necklace, like a solid piece of metal. And it, was, it had some weaving on it. Super cool. I still have it somewhere. But, you know, I remember saving my money and saving my money and we went and got it. And then I felt so guilty. Do you remember that guilty feeling you would get when you'd spend your money finally? Or am I a weirdo? Nope. I still get it now. It's called <laughs> buyer's remorse. Mm -hmm. Yes, buyer's remorse. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, just um, 
I really have always liked going antiquing and that's why this this little world has been so perfect for me. Wow, that's amazing. It's it's awesome to hear when uh some of the pinup beauties that I've interviewed, like they didn't just like discover like for me, I liked antiques, but not to that extreme. So this really is truly me embracing like a whole nother side of myself that I just didn't know I love. And so yeah. it's really awesome to hear people that have actually always embraced this. And now you just finally found kind of like your community to share it with a bunch of people who like yourself and love it. So we'll get yeah. to that. But um, you basically went to high school after your uh, middle school, of course, and <laughs> that you just worked really hard. Like it was a typical high school um, career, but you worked a lot. Yeah, yep. I worked at a pet store and I had so many pets. My mom's a, a veterinary uh, technician. Okay. And so animals have always been a part of my world. We used to show rabbits like people show dogs and cats. We had 400 rabbits. You show rabbits? I've never heard of show rabbits. It's a thing. It's a thing. And um, I've heard of show dogs. I've even heard of show horses, but I've never heard of show rabbits. Girlfriend, there's even show goldfish out there in the world. You can show anything. It's amazing. There's little worlds for everything, every niche. It's crazy. That is, so I used to ha I had at one time three rabbits, and I thought mm -hmm. they were, like, the coolest rabbits in the world because they used to beat up my Rottweiler. And, like, <laughs> yeah, like a 150-pound Rottweiler, right? And my <laughs> rabbit's name was Popple. And my Rottweiler was like jet black, with like a little bit of the brown. And Popple mm. was jet black. And I will let Popple out of his cage. And my dog will be like laying on like the, like this rug that he really loved. And Popple mm. will come up to him, look at him, and then pounce on his nose and then run away. And like my dog would get up and try to like chase him. And like he would <laughs> run into like these little nooks where he couldn't get into. So his snout would just fit. And he'll be like, <laughs> and he'll like try oh, to get into the, this rabbit. And then he'll finally give up, go way back down, okay? <laughs> and then Papa will come, run back out, and pounce back on his face again, and then run away. I was like, I was like, you're the best rabbit in the world. You're beating up a Rottweiler. <laughs> That's like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. <laughs> so if I would have known I could have probably trained my rabbit to be a show rabbit, I would have totally done that. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there, all of those things are out there. And so, and I worked at a pet store, uh, I, I probably worked at a pet store about eight years. I worked at two different wow. ones. Yeah. Wow. Up into my twenties, of course. That's um, amazing. Yeah. And then I was always helping my dad and I shoveled horse poo at the stable down the road. That was stinky, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, when did you buy your horse? Um, you know what? Again, one of my blessed moments in my life. That's all I ever wanted as a child was a horse. You know, we did all these rabbit shows. And, and sometimes uh, where the rabbit shows would be, there would be horse shows going on at the same venue. So, like, I just wanted one so bad. And they knew it. And, and one day, it was around Easter when I was 10. I got my horse. Oh my gosh. You're like so lucky. That's like what all those little girls want. We're like, we just want a pony. Can we have a pony? And you got yeah. a pony. <laughs> I did, and she was pregnant, and then I had another pony, and my dad was like, well, let's go make some more babies. So uh, at one point, I had uh, six horses total. Yeah. So is the horse you have now the original horse that you were gifted or is this like one of the offspring? Sadly, no. It was, uh, was one of the offspring. So yeah. it was one of the offspring. Off, uh, my dad went and got a horse for himself because he thought we would ride, you know, but he just, he works way more than anyone I know. I don't know who he was kidding. But, so it was like, he got this horse for himself, but really he just got, she was fast, a speed machine for me. And, uh, and then she had a baby eventually. And that's, that's the one that I still have. Um, you know, the day she was born was like the best day of my life. I, I got my first, I had saved up money <laughs> and bought an electric guitar. Mom had take me, uh, to a place and we got a guitar and my dad called and said, your, 
your baby, the baby's here. So we went out there and it was a beautiful day. And uh, I remember she was laying in the grass and I went and pet her and laid on the grass and we took a nap in the grass. I was like laying on her little back. And she's a blondie too. I'm into blondes. <laughs> Oh, and that's Zenith, right? And that's Zena, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Well, like I said, definitely get me pictures. I want to see the horses. I will. <laughs> okay. Um, no, we made it out of like high school. We we're into our twenties, and then you took on a pretty interesting career that you're still in now. And let's mm -hmm. let's tell people about what what do you do for a living? Well, I'm a union construction laborer. And, um, you know, I guess part of the reason I chose to be union is union makes better money anyway than just someone who's non-union in the construction field. But also, a woman is paid the same as a man. There's never, you're never going to have that difference. Where sadly, in a lot of industries, that's not the case and that's bullshit. Yeah. But you're not going to have that in the union. And, yeah, they um, have to treat you equally. Otherwise, you get that union rep on the line, and mm -hmm. and you have someone yeah. to back you up. And some women, you know, make me proud and and work as hard as they can, you know. And, and some kind of take advantage, yeah. which okay, you do yeah. what you do. Yeah, but you're not one of those. You're a hard worker. No, I like I like to work. <laughs> I hear that when I'm telling you all this stuff. I'm like, oh, I guess I like to work. I didn't want to be. It's okay, girlfriend. It's okay. It's okay that you're into what you do and you put your best foot forward. Like I respect that. I hate people that are lazy or half asses. So it's good to know that you 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 don't use the fact that you're a woman in a male dominated field and you feel like you can just get away with it. No, you put in just as much hard work as they do. So that's awesome. I try really so, hard to make that a point. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta work harder than some of the men do to prove your point, to prove you're there and to prove you're not a slack ass. Um, well, what do you do? Like, are you, are you one of the people just hold the signs? Are you out there like putting together? Like, what do you do? When I started out, I spent a lot of time, I mean, cause I was just a kid out of school, you know, um, actually originally I wanted to operate heavy equipment, which, I worked for my brother for like the summer and uh, operated some heavy equipment, but I was having a hard time because of the economy in 2008 and 2009, you know, it was like real bad and the operators weren't taking apprentices so much, but I'd been on their list. I was number nine on their list and they finally took eight in the in the summer of 2009 i'm like screw it i need insurance so i became a laborer um so yes in the beginning i spent a lot of time with that stupid stop slow sign you know what i think it's sleeting outside right now i don't know if you can see that but are you serious yeah sleet because it's what not quite snow. i know i know we're close where do you where, what city are you in i'm in leclair iowa so it's just it's the quad cities technically the quads. okay yeah. <laughs> no we have sunshine here so far so um maybe we're gonna get it after you well i hope not i hope you keep your sunshine there <laughs> <laughs> um but so af after they found out you know i could work i um i did all kinds of things i get down in the hole where we're putting in pipe and and dig or um hand stuff down to my guy that was down there digging the pipe you know cause sometimes you gotta have a person it's called a top man <laughs> so sometimes i was the top man and um after that i learned how to do gps so i would go and and um kind of check behind the bulldozers or the machines pulling the dirt away uh, to get the right grade and check behind them or put little flags to say hey you need to take a little more or put a little bit back oh, wow. um, and then after that, I kind of moved more into um, building trades and um, was inside an aluminum plant called Arconic or it used to be Alcoa mm -hmm. and um, did all kinds of demo and building things in there. 
And now <laughs> this last year is, isn't very construction-y, but it's been the best job I've had because it's very relaxed and I point a finger <laughs> basically and set some boards down to set some material. It's, it's kind of like recycling. So I like that. And uh, I'm kind of OCD. So there's a lot of organizing in it. You know, I've got all these different stacks of different types of metal out in a big yard and and that's why I'm doing the pointing and setting the wood down, you know, stacking it up. <laughs> I mean, I have you ever like had a negative response or some kind of like um older backlash men. of being a, a woman? <laughs> yeah. Old guys, you know, they're not they're not used to women being out there all the time and, and um I remember a guy saying Oh, uh, we were going to do a bridge. The next project after something we were doing in, in a building trade, we built the lar one of the largest aluminum stretchers in the world. And we were wrapping that project up. And the next project um, was going out on a bridge on, on 80, which is just a few miles from here. And uh, I wanted to go. And he's like, Oh no, that's bull work. You know, you won't want to do that. I'm like, I want to do anything I can to stay with this crew because I like this particular crew I was on and and I did man I lifted these eight foot pans and they weigh about the same amount as I do and I'd have to carry them around freaking hating my life but I at that point I wanted to prove to that guy and he's retired now he probably doesn't even remember saying that to me you know but you know just things like that I take that in or um you know I, I think my brothers, like I was saying earlier, they're all in construction too. Um, and my grandpa, and they're like, I don't know if you should. But I had one brother who was like, yeah, hell yeah, you can do that. <laughs> so that was really inspirational for me that to know one of my brothers were, were uh, going to stand behind me. And then another brother, I mean, he let me work for him. So I. Yeah, so he had to be supportive if you work with him. Yeah. Um, with you being so like cute and just bubbly and pretty. Did you ever have like the face like sex and harassment or like them like oh you know, yeah I yeah I, say, I mean I guess extra harass as a as a freaking nurse so I'm like I know you have to get like yeah yeah you know but and I don't know if it's because of my squeaky little voice you know a lot of people were were pretty good to me I didn't get a whole lot of sexual harassment on the workplace you know where I get it the most. Was people blowing by in their cars when I had that stupid stop sign and being like, woohoo, like swerving and like, Jesus Christ, don't kill me. Right. You know? <laughs> um, so you, you would think you would have more sexual harassment in the workplace, but they're pretty respectful, at least in this area. It, it might be because, you know, it's a smaller community. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you didn't have to go through it because um, it's not fun to be in a, an environment where you feel like, Oh God, I'm gonna get like all this like unwanted attention, and so I'm glad yeah, you didn't I mean, have to go through that a lot. That happens when you're the only female on the job site. People are paying attention to you, writing about you on the porta potty walls. You know, you finally made it when you make it on the porta potty. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but you know, great. Yeah, so <laughs> I get it. I, trust me. So, um. I'm going to say basically in 2013, you went to your very first classic car show. Yeah, uh, 2012 I did. And um, I, <clears throat> I went to other ones around here and they're like, they're the kind where you pull your car in and you sit there and it's a parking lot. Mm -hmm. And it's not really for me. I appreciate the cars and all that, but this, vintage torque fest is more of a lifestyle thing and I I was like oh my god I'm home you know all these people that you know are, are you found your tribe yeah basically you know these people are dressing how I you know wish I could dress all the time I can only dress this way some of the times and um in their beautiful cars and the awesome music and all the vendors with their antiques and it's like heaven for me. Yes. <laughs> you're like even hugging your steering wheel while you're talking about it. You like love it. You're like, you're like I'm <laughs> <laughs> But I do feel like that. And we're like a family, honestly. And, you know, if you're mean, 
and and not kind to others and this you don't last long i've noticed they're gone nobody wants your negative energy yeah. i'm and that's that's i mean we'll get to that but yeah that's one of the reasons <laughs> why i am like loving the community as well and yeah. now you do the the badass construction you're a badass we all know this you're rough and tough. You're <laughs> with the guys and then you are you're shoveling up the rocks and you're you're laying pipe and you're doing all this great stuff as a woman but you you expressed to me that you get laid off kind of like during the winter time because you know there's not as much work so mm -hmm. you picked up another you know little side deal here and what was that Yep, and also in the winter of 2012 into 2013 there, I picked up photography. I did an internship. I had always liked photography. Uh, another one of my dad's side deals we had was we would get um, like boxes, banana boxes full of, of things from the grocery store that like would come in damaged or whatever, and you could go buy those products for a very discounted rate. And so we would just get tons of disposable cameras and so I had all these cameras you know at my fingers and I took so many pictures and so when I saw this opening to do an internship I was like oh man oh man I sent him some of my work and uh, and he was like yeah you'll be great and so I went there and he kind of asked me what I would be passionate about and and I had showed him the type I'd showed him some uh, Shannon Brooke images she's my very favorite um photographer and he's like well here's some money go get some props you know and i did and that was fun because i'm you know treasure hunting and uh, and and i jumped into that and oh wow so you did your first photo shoot yep um you know i did end up he he did some photos of me as well but uh i invited some of my girlfriends at the time and i'm a cousin to come come dress up and try to do your hair as vintage as possible and and we had fun and some of those photos are still my favorites you know from the beginning oh wow how many girls did you shoot for that photo um well it was just um they were all separate okay but yeah but I, I think i did like four or five different girls Till I realized that I was freaking addicted and, uh, <laughs> and spent the rest of my time going to antique stores and auctions and buying all these antiques for, for props slash I'm addicted, maybe yeah. a little bit of a hoarder. So <laughs> it, it works out. I was going to say, at least you're, you know what, at least you're making dual purposes of it, you know? Oh, yeah. That's, yeah, small, but, that's smart thinking. That's a smart businesswoman. <laughs> My goal, I don't always reach my goal, but my goal is to uh, have these props and things and make you question, the person who's looking at the photograph, make you question whether it's from now or from then. That's awesome. That's the goal for me anyways. <laughs> well, give yourself a little bit of a plug. What's the name of your photography studio? Uh, my photography studio is called Genesu Photography. I just really like to keep it simple, Shell. I like um, it. It's okay because I will remember that when I'm talking about it. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I go when I do these events, when I do these car shows, I dress up because you got to represent. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I dress up and I'm out there in my little high heels. Well, not out there. I'm in there in my photo booth, my little high heels, climbing up on my chairs or my ladders and taking pictures because, um, like I said, my my main goal is is to make you question whether it's now or then but also um i love the feeling of how women feel after they're done with the photo shoot i know and if they if they aren't like happy well i've never had anyone leave upset we'll say that <laughs> you know i just love that feeling afterwards the confidence boost they get and i just it's like you're making art with another person it's a really special feeling. Yeah. And it's something that will live on forever. Like yes. photos last photos forever. Live on. They say yeah. that. They last forever. I mean, so. when people are in fires, they say one of the number one things that people like save after their family, of course. <laughs> and yeah. their pets. 
is like they try to grab photo albums. They try to grab like those kind of things because they just pack so many memories and you're making a memory for these girls, especially if it's their first like time and they're nervous mm -hmm. and you don't feel oh. pretty and you don't feel like, oh my God, I don't look as pretty in this outfit or I, I feel fat today or mm -hmm. all these things that we do as women. As, yeah. You know, like to have a great photo shoot is like, you, it's empowering because it, it yeah. makes you feel good. So. The first time is always so much fun because you've got people, your clients doing all these funny things and they're like, they were like, are you sure? So then I got to flip my camera around and be like, see, look, it doesn't look as awkward as it feels. Yeah. And uh, I had to get used to that. It was like a lot of like the tour, like posing where you're like, your shoulders are like weird. And like, and you're like, really? You're like, yeah. Really? Who, who does this? Like just right. naturally. Nobody does that. <laughs> right. But it looks amazing it looks on photos. It looks amazing in print. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's great. And then the name of your photo photography studio is once again? Jenna Sue Photography. Okay. And do you have like a Facebook or uh I, I just have Facebook. Um yeah, I should probably have a website, but but mostly I want to do pinup. So Facebook has been adequate enough to um, to meet my clientele. And I, I've recently uh within like I don't know, the last year or so, another friend of mine started a photography studio in Iowa City, which is just an, uh, an hour from here, mm -hmm. uh, Focal Points by Frankie. And sometimes we like to team up and, and uh, do shoots together. And my friends who have Abernathy's in Davenport, um, the one owner is a hairstylist, and the other owner um, is always really good at, at getting wardrobe together. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and she helps me a lot. Like She'll be my assistant a lot. Uh, help pose ladies and then obviously the the other girl's got her work cut out for her she's got to do all the hair and makeup and and focal points they'll they'll use them too from time to time and yeah it's yeah. just I know Kat and Hannah help oh yeah and Kat yeah. and Hannah duh. Yeah. <laughs> they use I them I do too. know them I do know them they've actually yeah. been interviewed so I do know them good good I haven't had the opportunity to um I, I've shot them before I've, I've not got the opportunity to uh, shoot their work, we'll say. Well, you know yeah. what? I am. We're going to talk off the camera because you might have to cook. You might have to shoot a little Coco Chanel. I'm just saying. I would love that. I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, you um, you lived your life like doing the the photography for a while, but you know, before we got on, we we. Uh, we talked a little bit and you got to wave to a special someone in your life that you met at, in 2016 mm -hmm. and he's your boo. What, who, who is this that I'm speaking of? Um, that's my boyfriend, Kevin. And I met him at work. It'd be real hard to bring home an artist or, you know, something home to my family who's full of construction <laughs> workers. So he's in the construction field too. So it, Aww. It's just got a natural flow to it. <laughs> and he understands your lifestyle, so it won't be that hard for him to understand. Like when you come home tired and you've had a long day, he understands yeah. exactly like how that can be. Yep. Yeah. He. You know, we we try to split responsibilities as equally as possible, and yeah. and help at the same time. Like we do them together. Yeah. It's kind of boring when you gotta just clean house by yourself or rake leaves by yourself so we try yeah. to do as many things together as possible and i know and you guys are trying to merge your two lifestyles now together because you sold your yeah. house you guys moved in so now you're kind of like merging your life of the vintage with his life but he you know and that's kind of like always mm -hmm. a nice little um you know it could be stressful but then fun because you guys kind of find what you guys like together yeah yeah which um our thing has been he's a carpenter and he likes to uh, use wood and things from sometimes from our construction projects we've been on, or like we took down this this redwood tower, a water tower um, with all this old redwood. I mean, it's got to be close to 200 years old at this point. Oh wow! And uh, and so we just added on a kitchen addition. There's a basement, which is going to be a bedroom. Mm -hmm. So we dug a hole, did the foundation, all that, and then a kitchen on top of that. 
And so right now, he's so happy. He's in his hoosaw because he's getting to use all his redwood that we, we took down. Oh, and wow. Give it new life. I love people that can do stuff like that, like build things from scratch with their hands. It's so manly. It's such a manly thing to be able to do. Like, it hey, is. babe, go cut down this tree and build me a kitchen. Okay. Like, <laughs> that's, like, amazing. Like, yeah. I love it. It's handy too. He's um, so far. He's he's built me a couple little props, but the best prop, and and you might have seen it in some of our friends' mutual friends' photos, is a, a giant moon. This moon is like nine foot tall, and it's real pain in the butt to move around. Um, but but it's been a great photo prop for people. Yeah. And so he built one for me, and, and like I said, he's supposed to build me a little bit of a, a vintage kitchen scene so I can get all my vintage trinkets back out. Yeah. Um, with new house, but <sighs> it's handy. <laughs> I'm telling you, snatch him up, girl. He's been not that many <laughs> handy men around these days. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Um, so now we're kind of like got to the part where you started really entering like the pinup scene yourself and tell us a little bit about like, you know, you like doing the contest and showing off the, the look. <laughs> yeah, so I enjoy doing the contests um, to an extent. I get anxiety, but um, probably not as much as, as some people might. But it's just, I can't, for me, I can't quite figure out what they're looking for always. So I haven't like nailed that. And also I got into the photography. So it's not, it's not necessary for me. But when I started out, I enjoyed, you know, trying the contest. And um, my favorite one that I won was the Meltdown Drags. And this is where they have vintage cars going like 100 or more miles per hour down these, dra down the drag <laughs> strip. <laughs> oh my God, yeah. It seems so unnatural. I mean, you know how heavy they are. Like, yeah. if, have, God forbid. But if we were to melt down Pinky, she could probably make like three new cars, you know, with the amount of metal. Think about how heavy that is. And yeah. then it's just, I mean, some of them are fiberglass, you know, but not all of them. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, I'm glad that you were able to embrace the scene in your unique way, which was giving the gift of the photography side, because that is such an important part of it. So, and the fact that you live this lifestyle and you love it, it allows for you to recreate these moments in time for these women because yeah. you totally embrace it. So, I mean, and, trust me, we need more people on that side than on the stage because when we're up there, we, we want to see all the beautiful photography afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would say, you know, when you get into this, yes, first thing, you got to get a dress. You got to figure out how to do your hair and your makeup. Those are the very most important. Those are the bones, right? The next thing is to get your photos done because yeah. you want to enter in contests and you have a, you know, a selfie. It's That's not, okay. I can tell you right now, from my point of view, selfies are not the good, not not the best idea. Because I actually no. got into a contest and they used my selfie that I had or the picture I had, and it was just not like oh, once they put together like the flyer, everybody looks so cute. And then here I was, I had like the high school like shot where I was just like, and it was just like <laughs> god awful. God awful. Well, if that's all you got, I'm I'm not saying I'm by no means discouraging you or anyone else from using a selfie, but it just says so much more about you, you know, if you've got, you know, a yeah, professional yeah. spot. Like, I, yeah, you're in it to win yeah, it. You're here. I'm in it, right. You're in it to win it. And they're gonna plaster that picture everywhere. Yeah, so, sometimes they do. <laughs> yeah, so you're really going to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward. So it's always good to hire somebody or look, in pe uh, look at people like Jenna to, like, see what her work is. And I, would, I highly encourage you guys to check her out because I've seen some of her work, and it's amazing. And she actually came mm -hmm. recommend it to me. So definitely look her up and, uh, get, like, give her a try for your, especially if it's your first one. Because this might be the one that gets you your first contest or your first whatever, your magazine. Um, it, it, it can go the sky's the limit when you have a really good photographer behind you. So, I would um, also say, Shell, is a lot of times when you're on stage, they want you to, um, you know, pose 
or, you know, bust a move. So where do you learn these moves? Yeah, you can learn them um, from looking at other people's pictures or I guess I don't know where people really learn Google. how to do these moves. Google, the internet. Google, okay. <laughs> so I just, I learned these moves through photography. So then when, when a client comes to me, especially a new girl, you know, I'm showing them the moves and yeah. you need those. That's like practicing. It People is. Might not realize and you feel it, more comfortable you're... when you're on stage because you've already had that like in your face, someone like taking pictures, putting you on the spot, being the center of attention. It does make the transition to the stage much easier. Yep. You're just practicing. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, this has been amazing getting to know you, Jenna. I kind of want to let the girls and the, and the fellas out there kind of hear what uh, Jenna Sue's Pearls of Wisdom are. So my pearls of wisdom are definitely my favorite part about the photography thing is lifting people's spirits and teaching them what you can, even if it's, you know, little things, just be there, be supportive of one another. That's, you can be as beautiful as you want, but if you're a, a bee, you're not going to last and you're not going to have many friends. So you might as well just, just be nice. Be nice yeah. and lift everybody's spirits when you can. Um, and then I guess my other thing would be with the girl in a man's world, you know, don't, don't let anyone get you down. Believe in yourself, you know, and work yeah. harder than them. That sucks, but work harder than them. No, that's great advice. But sometimes that's what it takes for you to make that next transition into a bigger role or to advance your career. Unfortunately, yeah. as women, we're looked at as being weaker, not as smart, not as whatever, fast. And we're showing every single day we can literally do everything a man can do. So, yes, let's work hard. I agree. High five. High five, Jenna. Girl power, girl power. Yes, well, thank definitely. you. Yes, girl power. Well, thank you so much for being on my um, pros of wisdom. Um, it's been amazing getting to know you. You're like I said, you're adorable. Um, and you just yeah. keep you're so sweet. <laughs> you're welcome. You keep going out there and showing that rough and tough, tough old like town boy side, and then getting out there and making us women in the community and all over feel beautiful about ourselves because it's really inspirational to have a person who plays both sides of the fence where you're like this tough girl, but then you also like this nice, sweet gal. So thank you for being out there for our, our, our girls out here to have someone to look up to. So that's amazing. Thank you, Shell. <laughs> you're very welcome, honey bunch. Um, thank you guys out there for joining in. If you have not already, hit like, 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 subscribe at the bottom there. If you have any questions or you want to get a hold of Jenna Sue for photography needs and all that kind of good stuff, I'll have some of her information like on the slides and just give her a shout out. She's right on Facebook. And I'll tell you right now from everybody that's worked with her, no one's had anything negative to say. So I, I can almost guarantee that you'll have a good experience. So give her, give her a call. And um, I will see you guys all later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hang on, Jenna. I'll be right back with you. <laughs> all right.